Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Rashmita, and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor, Bengaluru, India. This session will run over the next 60 minutes, including Q&A. Quick word on our code of conduct. We are here to learn, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout, and we do encourage you all to participate. I would now like to welcome Pranika and Vivek, our speaker for today's session. Pranika is a fi final year undergraduate student pursuing bachelor's in information technology from Bangalore. She is a Microsoft Go uh, Gold Learn student ambassador and a former GDC lead. Our next speaker, Vivek, is a tech enthusiast and an open source contributor with around 15 years of experience in the software industry. He works at Microsoft as a senior cloud advocate, but for now, I will hand over to both of you to begin the session. Over to you. Hey, Rashmita. Thank you. And uh, hi, everyone. You know, Happy New Year. And this is our first session uh, in this uh, amazing New Year 2022. And this is our first Azure Happy Hour. Te you know, technically, it's not Friday today. Uh, but you know, because of the festival season, we are moved Azure Happy Hour to the Wednesday. So we are celebrating Azure Happy Hour you know, on a Wednesday today. And uh, today we have Pranika. Hey, Pranika, how are you? Hi, Vivek. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all good. I'm all good. Hey, um, you know, I'm super excited to have you today, you know, in my show. And um, I also wanted to learn uh, how to build and deploy a full stack app uh, using the Azure Static Web App. And uh, it's nice to have you here and uh, have a discussion with you. So yeah, you know, uh, introduce yourself uh, to the audience. Uh, yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Pranika and I'm a finally undergrad student uh, pursuing my bachelor's in information technology from Jan University, Bangalore. Also, I'm upcoming technical support intern at Microsoft this summer. And most of the times whenever I'm free, I'm a Thanka artist as uh, like I love painting, I love to do photography, and I love traveling, reading books. Whenever I'm free, I do mo this most of the times. Apart from that, I'm also a person who keeps on giving talks on different sessions, whether it's technical or non-technical. So you can find me mentoring different hackathons or leading some different communities. Uh, presently, I'm a Gold Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador at Microsoft, and I was a former GDSE lead as well at Google Developers. Uh, it has been an amazing journey for me, and I was looking forward that when I will, you know, have a one-to-one -one conversation with Vivek in this session, uh, because I have spoken so many events, but I'm really excited to be a part of this session as well. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It's amazing. You know, uh, you know I learn a lot when uh, I interact with you, so that's amazing. Yeah, so uh, it's about Azure Static Web App today, and um, I know it's a you know how you can build a full stack app. I you know from a back end heavy app, and and there was a front end which is not very heavy, and uh, modern apps are being built like a you know front end heavy, and the back end is you might not even need a back end. <laughs> You know, we can just use Azure functions. So that's what uh, Azure uh, Static App uh, Web App is all about, right? So go ahead, uh, you know, Pranika, just, uh, you know, let us know what we have as part of the agenda. And uh, I will be bugging you with questions. Uh, please, uh, you know, <laughs> don't feel anything. I'm going to, you know, bug you with a lot of questions. And uh, I, I'm, you know, uh, for audience as well, right? And I'll just keep you know, asking questions to us, and uh, we are happy to answer. Okay, so go ahead, Pranaka. So today's agenda about the event. First of all, we will talk about what is a web app, right? Uh, we have seen so many applications, so, but what makes it so unique? What is an Azure Static Web App? So we will be discussing about that. After that, we will be knowing about some key features, how it is unique from other applications, then how you can what things you can do with static web applications, how you can build your own static web app. And then we will discuss some 
deep applications of what is a st static web app what are the frameworks and things what happens at the back end and we will make our own static web app that i will be showing a demo at the end and there will be different things as well which is uh, in this session today and i'm looking forward to share my knowledge with all of you <laughs> so moving towards what is about Azure Static Web App. So first of all, what is a web app basically? So web app is something that you see on your screens that right now you are seeing YouTube. That's a web app itself, right? We are not seeing some sort of AR or VR. This is a web app itself. You can see some online portals, uh, some, uh, some shopping websites, right? So these are some sort of web applications. So what is Azure Static Web App? So something is there which... I think that there are different problems globally. Uh, and we right now, if you see the that technology is increasing day by day, and we want that those hard problems should be, uh, you know, uh, it should take less time rather than taking a lot of time. So this is something which is really nice. And it automatically builds and hosts it from your GitHub, as well as through Azure DevOps. So static web apps are commonly built using some different libraries and frameworks. Uh, you can say it, uh, it can be Angular, it can be React, anything. And these apps include certain languages that is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and some image assets that make up the whole application. And whenever you are using such traditional web server architecture, so these files are served from a single server alongside with the API endpoints that is required over there. So this is a brief introduction about Azure Static Web App. Um, I'll be going so I next. I have a question. Yeah, so I yeah. Have a question sure. So it, it's not a question. So basically, I'm trying to understand. Um, so I have uh, an application um, which has, say, for example, I have a couple of APIs, uh, which is there at the back end. And I have a... Uh, beautiful front end for that and uh, it is being connected uh, through the uh, different um, you know js you know frameworks so now uh, if i want to have it um, deploy i mean if i users wanted to access it faster and want to deploy it globally and want to make sure um, you know the back end is not too heavy and and most of the uh, related work is done on the front end and in the client side. So is that is this a good candidate uh, for the static web app? I would say this is the best thing. If you will compare with other deployment services, for example, Netlify, it doesn't have a particular feature of using tags, right? There's an option where we use tags in Azure that makes it very unique. For example, that whatever scenario that you have given to me, that you have a heavy web page, a heavy web application with different features, and you want to deploy it in some other way, it, which should be scalable enough and should be secured. So this is something which will give you altogether a good package for your own web page. So this is the best option. And that's why it is very unique from other uh, deploying, deploying services itself. Okay. I hope so, I answered the question. <laughs> I, I mean, I got it. I was, I'm just trying to understand. So it's basically, uh, I mean, and, and also, uh, what is static there? So when, when, when you're talking about like static web app, I know about web app. What is, what is static there? Static is basically, uh, according to me, is something that is not uh, moving. Not moving in a sense, it's just static. Uh, we we cannot see in uh, you know in physical motion itself uh, in virtual or physical mode because we are on our laptop screens and this is also a static web page which is displayed over me right now so this is something that is a static web app itself uh, that it just works according to an online web page where it's not having any physical uh, you know features for example argument reality or virtual reality that is i think that is up to uh my way of thinking of about static web app <laughs> okay so you know, uh, in a in a web app uh, world static is all about those images 
the yeah. other things you know which gets downloaded um when you load a page and it is not so you know you don't really need a you know server at the backend to send this uh, data or every time i load the page so basically you are uh, loading it from a uh, content delivery like the CDNs, which is which is which is part of the globally distributed point CDNs, where uh, if a person is loading from India and you know uh, the server is hosted somewhere else, but uh, you have a, a CDN point which is there in India, then we will be able to uh, POP is called POP where you can download these uh, static files. Okay, perfect. Let's let's go ahead. You know, let's go to the next one. Uh, so there are some sort of key features of the static web app, which makes it very unique. And I'll be discussing one by one uh, about how these features make this application so unique. So the first option is about web hosting. Uh, for example, you have a web page, a static content that Vivek has already discussed. For example, static image, or you have created a document using HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, it makes it very easy to host static content like that. Then we have integrated API. So it is some sort of support, which is provided by Azure Functions with the option to link an existing Azure Function app using any standard account. For example, I'm having my own uh, student ambassador account. So I have my own uh, existing Azure Functions and I can link it with the integrated API of my static content, which is available over there. The third one is about, there is a GitHub and Azure DevOps integration option where whatever repository that you have created in your GitHub, it makes changes, it triggers the building options and deployments and whatever email ID that you have linked with your GitHub and your Azure account, you will get all the notifications itself that how is your app working properly only by using your own repository, which is present in the GitHub. Then uh, we have globally uh, distributed static content, which makes the content very closer to the users itself whenever they are you know, using this uh, static web app application. Then we also have free SSL certificates, which are automatically renewed. You don't need to... Uh, make some changes or go to any other service as most of the services they don't provide such features so this is something which is very unique about the static web app next we have about custom domains yes so you you have your own provided uh, customizations of your app uh, for example i'll be showing in the demo itself how you can create your own domains itself by using certain of uh, um, websites like dot domain or godaddy you can choose from there anything any domain and you can uh, put it as your own domain.com itself for your static web app then we have seamless security model with a reverse proxy whenever we are calling any sort of apis uh, whenever you require some heavy configuration you can say this is something which is regarding security and then we have authentication provider for the integrations with Azure Active Directory. If you are familiar with Azure Active Directory, you can authenticate those integrations. Then we also have GitHub and Twitter as well. We provide all integrations with these app services. Then also we have customization, uh, authorization, role definitions, and different assignments. That is something um even which was new to me but i'm not so familiar with it but this is a new feature that i've also learned when i was you know developing that static web app then we have a backend routing rules uh which enables a full control over the content and routes that you serve and the last but not the least we have a generated staging versions which is powered by pull requests whenever you are enabling any preview versions of your site before publishing. For example, I will show you in the demo itself that how whenever I'm publishing it, how those Azure functions and GitHub actions are working in the backend, how the requests are pulled and how the things are done properly and how it is published in a good way. So this is something which makes static web apps very unique and very easy yeah. to deploy 
<laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of questions now. <laughs> Let's go back one slide. Let's go back one slide. Um, so uh, when you say web hosting, it's more of like hosting all the HTMLs and CSS uh, and the images and other things. Um, say, for example, I have a React.js app. I mean, I'm an Angular or React.js app. Um, I can integrate that uh, you know that specific front end into back end APIs by having Azure functions. That's what you meant when you say integrated API, right? And yes. then obviously it has amazing support for GitHub and uh, Azure DevOps integration. So it's directly you can use the you know uh, both the things uh, to build and deploy your apps uh, because it is uh, CN, you know. It gives you uh, support for CDN. Globally, distribution is pretty easy, and it is already built with it. And uh, and obviously, free SSL certificates. So I understood all this part. The next slide. So you have a custom domain. So I'm going to see that in the demo anyways. And obviously, you have the security and authentication, where if I want to build an authentication, I can use uh, an authentication provided by the Azure on the fly. And yes, and we have staging versions and routing with technologies because you, if I can build a couple of uh, you know, functions at the back end and use these routing rules to route my uh, requests as well. So perfect. So we now understood the key features of this. Uh, let's go ahead, uh, Premika. Okay, so what we can actually do with the static web apps, right? So this is now the another question which comes up in everyone's mind and we are discussing what the static web apps or what we can do, right? So the first one is you can build modern web applications with Java frame with JavaScript frameworks and different libraries like Angular, React, I've already discussed be uh, before itself, or using Blazor to create WebAssembly applications uh, with an Azure function on the back end. That is something which is really nice. And then we can also publish static sites with frameworks like Gatsby and other frameworks itself. You can use any framework, so you don't need to worry about it for any static site whenever you are publishing it. And then you can also deploy web applications with certain frameworks like next.js and other frameworks as well. Like it is uh, completely uh, feasible to all the frameworks and all the libraries, which makes it very unique. Where I don't think that this feature is available in other uh, services that you can connect with different frameworks and you can make it uh, make your own web page look so nice, right? I hope I'm right, Vivek. I don't know. It's something. <laughs> if you have questions, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> we can go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, yes. let's go to the next one for the demo part. Yep. So right now, I'll discuss. I've already discussed below that um, uh, that how are static web apps built. So these are some applications where we use certain libraries and frameworks. That's already discussed. But I think I should jump on towards the. Uh, main part that is the demo part so i'll be showing you first of all let me just discuss about this is how the azure portal looks like and i'll be showing you the demo itself that how is an azure portal and how you can deploy your own static web page so before that you should uh, whenever you are building any uh, azure static web app uh, first of all you should have your azure account right you can have a free subscription as well for the students who are using uh, if you are a college student or if you are a school student you can use your college id or your school id to get free access for a few months you can use azure as well and then you should have your github account which is absolutely free uh, for an optional case you can use visual studio code you can link your code as well through your azure account by visual studio code and then you should have Azure Static Web Apps extension installed over there in the Visual Studio Code. And you should also install Git for that. This is how it works. You can see on the diagram itself that there are two options where you can deploy your own static website. Either you can use GitHub account where you can just click on it, click on any repository that you have created on your computer and upload it on the GitHub. And you can deploy it uh, uh, seamlessly without any hassle. And second one is through Visual Studio Code. Uh, it takes long time, but 
this is also a second way where if you will install the web extension for that and install git automatically using visual studio code you can deploy your static web app through vs code itself so there are two options i will be showing the first option how you can use your github account and how you can make your own build your own first static web app so let's get started with the demonstration part uh, i'll stop sharing my screen and i'll share my other screen itself uh, one second i'll just go back here and i hope you are able to see my screen right now no i don't have it here now yep fine so this is how the azure portal looks like uh first of all you can just search on azure and you can just write microsoft azure on uh, your screen and you can see that there are some notifications or these are some credits which are available to me right now so how to build your first static web app is uh first of all i'll go to my github account and there i'll see my profile i'll just open it side by side so that it's good for you so here are some of the repositories which are available available and this is my repository which is a web page that i have made which describes about hotel in moon so i have made it with javascript html and css so this is my main file which is present over here the main folder that is the javascript and there are some licenses and stuff uh so this is my first this is the repository that i will be deploying here as a static web app so what i have to do i'll go to create a resource i'll click here and i will write static web app so you can see there is an option available over here i'll click and we'll go to create option because i want to create a static web app and the page will look like this so first of all uh, it will ask you about the uh project details where it will uh, whether it will ask whether you want to create a new resource group or the subscription it depends on what subscription you have i have visual studio enterprise subscription so i'll be clicking there it's automatically because i have only one subscription for other people who are having different subscriptions you have to click that uh in your azure portal uh for the resource group i can take any of the resources that i have created before but i will be creating a new resource name here so i can keep this as because my web page name is hotel in moon so i'll keep it as moon edge i think i've already made this moon double edge the resource group can be anything so this is a new resource group that i have created so now i will be entering my static web app name uh so already i have mentioned many names before so i'll change it to moon hotel i think it's available yes uh, it's very important that you don't have to um mention any sort of spaces so it will create problem it won't show a tick sign over there whenever you uh whenever you are creating any resource whether you are using azure or you are using any static web app it should show a tick mark over here it shows that you have you are doing everything correct for the hosting plan uh it asks whether you are doing for a personal project or you are doing it for a general purpose for production of application but right now i'm doing for my personal project so it is free of cost for the standard purpose it ask you about uh, it may charge you so that is a different option whenever you are working in any uh, firm and you want to create an app and it should not be your, it's it's not your personal project so you can uh, skip this part and you can just click on this option here co comes the question that why uh, we are taking the server location as central us there are different locations as well there are there are options like west us west europe east asia east us uh, we are staying in asia there is an india option as well but why we are taking the central us is most of the features are available in this region and you can access it from anywhere that's why it is uh, highly uh, 
it's a good option to take this uh, uh, as your location that is the central us location so that it doesn't create any problem whenever you are deploying any resource whenever you are making it on azure so as i told you that there are can two I, types can of you just deployment. list it can you just list the where it's available in regions can you list all the oh. regions yeah, yeah. yeah static uh, azure static web app is available only in these regions okay yes as of now it's in preview so it will it will be launched in all the other regions just in case for the audience you can note it down okay go ahead and there are two types of uh, ways that you can deploy that i have mentioned before but i will be using the github option so here it is uh, for the other option you can use uh, vs code but for the github uh, that will be popped up whenever you will be using VS Code directly. But I will be using GitHub here, so you can sign in with your GitHub account. Already, I'm signed in. When if you are not signed in on your GitHub account, it will ask you your um, email ID and password. So I will give the authorization access to it, and this is how it's done. So my organization is Pranika Ten because I'm involved in different organizations itself of GDSE and stuff, but I want that it should be my account. As I've mentioned, you can see on my repository, that is the first, uh, the, the name of the repository is first web page. I've kept it private and I will check the name of my repository. So it's mentioned here. So I'll click here. I'll branch it through the master uh, branch because this is something uh, I feel uh, that it takes all the requests, it triggers and builds all the things that is present in the static web app, and it's make it makes very easy uh, to you know branch and deploy the application in a good way. So I use the master branch, and for the building presets, I will be using custom. Uh, if you have a certain framework that Vivek was discussing before, so you can use these frameworks as well and you can use the static site generator but mine is custom so i will be taking the custom option i hope this clarifies everyone and for the app location uh you can see i've already mentioned in my previous slide itself that everything is available in this folder so i will be giving the name of the main folder so here i will write javascript it's already mentioned but i'll still write if you have a certain api you can also write api location but i don't have any sort of apis present so i won't mention here and for the output location it's not necessary to mention that so you can simply review and create it if you have a heavy website that Rivek was discussing you can create uh just add on some names and the values so that it's easy for the, you know, for the server side as well that, uh, and for the, uh, whenever you are deploying, it will be easy for the, uh, even whenever you are doing it, that uh, it's, there is a seamless experience, right? I mean to say that. So this is done when you have a heavy web page, but I, my web page is not too heavy. It's just made of three languages. So I will just review and create. Uh, so, it's validating, it's checking whether I have uh, I have missed something or is there anything. So it takes a little bit, just a few seconds. So yes, everything is fine. So I will click on create option. So it is initializing my deployment, submitting my deployment. So uh, now it just take a couple of minutes, just one or two minutes to deploy. So automatically it will land up in this page and we will see other features when this will be done. You can refresh if you don't have time and you are running out of time so you can refresh it. So my deployment is done successfully. I'll go to my resource here. I'll click here and here comes the major part is that um, you can see this is the main thing, the essential that my resource group name was Moon Edge. My subscription is given here. My ID is given here. Location, it's global. It's free. I haven't used any sort of tags. So this is my URL. So I'll click here. Here you will see that my web page is not yet available. Why? Because 
But if I'll go to GitHub uh, action runs, it is still working to the master branch that I was telling before. So it takes time. You can see here that there are some of the deployments and some of the things which is working on the back end. So this is something which is not yet loaded. Just for the sake, uh, whenever you're performing, you should not uh, feel in that way that my application is not yet deployed. This is because of this thing, because things are working. Some, some of the deployments are not successful. Some of the deployments are successful. It is in progress. So it takes a lot of time, but not that much. You have to wait for it. That's why I took the master branch because it starts from first to second, first to second, first to second. It keeps on continuing. Just click the on, just click on the, uh, the CI, which is running the above one, the above one, not this one. Go back. This one, that one. Yeah. 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 So go to the bill. Okay, so this is what it does. So basically it builds, it has its own build command, uh, and then it picks up the actions and then just run it. Okay, so this is on the fly, right? So you had your code in the GitHub and you, while creating the static web app, you just connect it to your GitHub and um, the GitHub actions is created on its own. So you haven't done anything yes. at the back end. Yeah. Perfect. So you can see here, I'll just refresh it and everything will be available on the screen, whatever I've developed. So it's a static web app, a hotel in Moon. I hope whenever this situation will come, they will publish my website. <laughs> that I've made already uh, a web page of hotel in Moon. Uh, so this is how the things work on. I'll go to my uh, Azure portal again. So here you can see the domain name is something like thankful moss. Uh, uh, the the web page describes about a, a, a booking service that is on moon. Uh, the name of the domain is uh, different and the web page is different. So what you can do is you can go to dot domain or you can go to GoDaddy. Uh, for example, if I want to uh, change domain from here, uh, it takes because we have short time, so it takes maximum of 15 to 20 minutes to change your domain. So what you can do is you can just go to dot domain or GoDaddy. You can choose any uh, of the domains from there and then you can click here and uh, you can change it by using certain uh, features which are available over here. It's very easy to be done and you just have to download the file and just have to mention there it's but it takes time to you know change this url to the another domain url uh, so this is something which works on the back end and you can see there are some of the requests and data out and function hits everything you don't have to do anything it's it's just present in the azure portal itself here are about the custom domains you can just filter it out that i was telling you before for the domain option uh, you can go to GoDaddy and you can just click here or you can just create, add on your new domain from any of the websites and it takes hardly just 20 minutes and it will validate and configure it and will uh, change your domain itself for this website. And for the environmental functions, it works like that. I have mostly worked in uh, domains and configuration and overview part and tags part very less, but this is something, an overview about how you can create your Azure static web app like this that I have created right now. Uh, Vivek, you are uh, mute. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is a great introduction to static web app. It's amazing. Uh, thanks, Pranaka. And by the way, there is a couple of questions. I'm just waiting for uh, some more questions. So while that come in, you can just share the learn module, which is there. So if you can share the link okay learn module link is here as well just wait it on yeah i'll just share Let the link share here so for the audience you know just keep pouring in questions i'll pick one of them i mean like i'll pick all of them by the way so one by one so there is one question um 
do we have support for Azure Active Directory, I believe, B2C authentication with static web app? It should be there. Um, yes. I'm not sure uh, whether uh, there is mm -hmm. any documentation. Let me check. Uh, yeah, as Prinika said in her one of our slides, if you can go back to that slide and um, uh, can you I just talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you have to uh, mention my slide option in the screen. Did add it. Yeah. Did get removed. So, yeah. Yeah. So here in the uh, option itself, I was talking about the uh, the Active Directory feature itself. Uh, where it is? One second. Um, Yeah, so whenever you are having, you know, the, the about the static web apps for the uh, for publishing static websites and deploying it, I've already mentioned in the uh, Active Directory that we have the option of certain frameworks and using it in Active Directory. Though I have created Active Directory, but I haven't used it. But it supports that feature. But I think Vivek, if you have uh, any idea about it, that how it's done. Uh, through so active one of the thing which uh, yeah one of the thing is uh, which I found is pretty recent uh, one it's basically Azure Active Directory support is there but B2C uh, there is in a custom right so uh, I think it's it's under the you know it's, it's under development so probably you might get a, get the uh, update on that whenever it is available. So I think that's something which you can say. But for your rest of the question which you had uh, from a user perspective, let me share the... I'm sharing the link in the chat for you to go back and check it. Perfect, so there is one more question. Um, let me share the question here. How static app is different from app service? What is main intention of having separate static web app? You want to pick that? Yeah, I would like to answer it. Uh, first of all, see, uh, I have already mentioned the key features that how it is different from other app services. Uh, you can see that there are some certain uh, applications. Uh, let me talk about Netlify. Okay, so in Netlify, uh, you can do it with your GitHub itself, but there are some conditions that you have to buy some assets also in Heroku itself. Here, there is continuous... Uh, deployment and you are building a static web app which is very simply done you don't have to code or you don't have to do anything which you have to do in other uh, uh, apps itself and other services and also uh, there are uh, different environments automated preview environments that you can uh, get a glimpse about what is happening in your static web app that i showed you in the demo itself which is not available in other features also, you have the SSL certificate management, which is totally free, which is not available in other features. And also there are functions, which is present in the same repository. That is also something very unique. You don't have to go through two, three features over there and you know work on it. And also there are APIs that are scaled and hosted with your static content, which is not in other features. There are many things which are not done in different features, and this makes it very unique, right? So this is the first part of the question. And what is the main intention of having separate static web apps? Um, I think this is something which is upcoming on my end and having your own static web app, uh, which is having all the features. Uh, being as a developer, I would prefer the, a feature which has all the features present. I don't have to go through some, through some XYZ uh, places and, you know, uh, put my head off that what's happening, right? If you are developers are something which they want everything in a one plate. And if it's available to us for some certain reasons, we should use it. So I think this is the main intention of having the static web app because it's very easy to deploy and everything is available here. I think Vivek, if you want to add on to my question, uh, 
to to the answer itself that would be great itself yeah so so the the question is uh, pretty simple so app service use case is very different uh, you have an application and you want to deploy it and scale it and uh, and here uh, i want to have an application which has heavy front end driven and not a back end driven right and uh, and also the because of the integration with azure functions uh, you can have api driven and use different uh, javascripting frameworks to interact with these uh, these apis and uh, run your application so there's an amazing um, you know support for um, you know and uh, what i see is even the cosmos db support is there and you can have um, you know the uh, you know front door support which is nothing but the control over your uh, security part of your uh, application and it is all coming to you with on the fly right so basically you just create as simple as what she showed right you just go and click up some buttons you have github repo and through this github repo you are actually uh, pushing uh, the code and it and it is automatically deployed and it uses the api integration at the back end and it is talking to each other now you keep changing your code and your code is out there the second advantage here is you can deploy your app globally and uh, because of the cdn support which it provides there is uh, you can deploy this apps globally and and it's easier for your users to access these application because it's most of the things are static so imagine you want to have everything at the front end right most of these the as an example uh, what she gave the uh, hotel moon right so there is most of the things are front end and you know some of the things would be back end with apis so that's it so if you want to build such an application it's easy and hardly you are using any infrastructure there you know you are just making sure that it is everything run on a pass mode right so that's the advantage of using that um i have another question as well but i want more context here because when you say are there also hosting options for the code on azure itself rather than github um i would rather maintain code on github repo right so i didn't get this question can you share more context hare krishna i think he is asking that rather than using github can we use some other resource to host the website i think it's from the visual studio code if you want to code directly oh yeah if you want to host it anywhere i mean like you can it's on local right so mm -hmm. but hosting the code has to be on the github the it's it's local to me it's local to you if it is visual studio um mm -hmm. but if we both have to collaborate it has to be on the github repo right so there is one more question yeah so if i understand static web app can be used for front end plus cms and app service for the web app, web api back end correct so you have you know heavy application at the back end that's true and the front you know if you have uh, most of those uh, front end apps which you have and you have a cms and couple of things you are doing at the back end as well uh, that's where you can use azure functions and uh, integrate with azure static web app so that's the main use case any more questions by the way we also have the learn module um you know you can play around with couple of things there's lot of already code and there are exercises and by the way you can also uh you know spin up a sandbox i believe just just take a look at this learn module and uh, spend some time so you know you can always uh, learn through it um any more questions from the audience there we can wait for five more minutes By the way, thanks, Pranaka. It was an amazing session. Thank you. Uh, I'm really glad that you gave me this opportunity. 
uh, to share my viewpoints about static web apps and I developed that application and I hope the audience even liked it that how it actually happened from scratch to this. Um, I would suggest that keep on uh, learning new things. That's my point of view that what I have done because I never knew about static web apps. I just went through some of the Microsoft Learn modules and I just popped up with this module. I thought like, why not to try it? So this is how I made myself learn about this. And from that day, I'm learning new things like that. Just picking random things and just keeping myself productive. <laughs> so that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, one thing, one thing I liked, you know, while interacting with you was like you said, you know, I learned something today and within three, four days, I'll go and uh, talk about it in the community. So that's awesome. <laughs> in fact, you learn something, you go and, uh, you know, you also teach the community while, you know, when once you have learned it, that's a good thing, right? Being as a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, that's how I did my events. For example, I never knew C Sharp. Okay, I took this topic. Uh, I remember in my initial, maybe previous year itself, uh, I just made myself learn about that language. I didn't know. I was so into JavaScript, HTML, Python, Java, this competitive programming and stuff. I thought it's very boring. Let's, you know, do something different. So I started with that. And one day I learned some basics. Next day, I just uh, announced my event. Okay, guys, come up. We will have one event. We will have one talk. What is C Sharp and how the things will go. And I give a good talk. And most of them were satisfied with my uh, teaching over there, how I train them. I never knew that I will be learning a new language and how this, this is how it will uh, go at the end. But I think everyone should work like that. We should not pressurize ourselves that we have to do these things. Just go with the flow. You will learn everything in your life. That's my motto and my way of learning all the time. Good one. Good one. There is one more question, by the way. So how caching done in Static Web App? Azure CDN or Azure Redis Cache? So, uh, yeah, you go ahead. You take it. I think I haven't used it uh, for the cache part because I just made it. I was so excited that, oh, my web page is made. I think, Vivek, you can take it if you have any experience. Yeah. So, so basically, um, so what I'm understanding from the question is uh, you're, uh, you're looking at how the images are cast and the static, um, I, you know, static uh, items are cast. So... Uh, basically, yes, Azure CDN. Um, it provides with the CDN support for you. Um, but you know, Redis Cache is use. You know, its use case is pretty different. It's not a CDN. Um, CDN is is basically a content delivery network where you are adding um, the static uh, files in that, and it is rendered and through POP. Uh, point to point. So there is something called as point to point concept in CDNs. So those point to point are hosted in different parts of the uh, globe. And, uh, you know, you sync your static files into those uh, POPs and say I'm from India, if I'm accessing the website, it go, you know, the, it goes to the near, the request goes to the nearest uh, POP and it uh, renders the uh, images from the nearest POP and it keeps syncing uh, from the main uh, whenever you update your code or whenever you update your images and other things there is a cache and there is a skin syncing of those caches there is a uh, you can have a different uh, uh, you know time the cron which runs right time slots right? different times to sync it so anyways so that is the reason uh, that is the difference between these two redis cache is completely different it is used for in different use cases um so that's like user management system users cookies or user you want to make sure that uh, you want to you know save the session of a user uh, that's when you use redis cache and other things so that is a different use case altogether
Um, yeah, no, uh, that's wrong. Basically, .NET tabs is a good fit here because uh, see, .NET six has a platform. It has various things: the Blazor support, right? The WebAssembly support. The moment you use Blazor, um, static web apps comes into picture as well. Like if you have a static web app scenario and you want to deploy a static web app and you have a .NET understanding of .NET and you, if you know about Blazors, uh, you would use .NET uh, as a backend. I mean, as a as a programming language. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Uh, let's wait for a minute or two, and then any more questions? We can wait for two more minutes. By the way, you can, if you go to, uh, by the way, uh, the person who asked about uh, yeah, Mohan. So Mohan, uh, if, you, um, if you're looking for Blazor and .NET focused uh, web app, just go to this learn module, which I have shared on the screen. Just go to this learn module. Uh, there is a learn module very specific to uh, Blazor app. Okay, there is one more question coming in. Uh, what exactly can be a use case for using Azure Function API in Static Web App. If it's Static Web App, then why would there be an API endpoint? Any example? So, see, uh, many times you would run uh, API at the backend, right? So, uh, you can take Prenica. Uh, I can, you know, probably take that up later. So basically, uh, for example, um, even I haven't used it API functions, but uh, if you're talking about what exactly can be a use case for using Azure Function API in static web app, uh, it is something I feel that we are using Azure Power, like Azure Functions, right? So that is something that we are adding some serverless APIs to the Azure static web apps that are powered by Azure Functions. So this is, it's, I think it's feasible uh, to work in a workflow whenever you're connecting with, uh, for example, you can see in the demonstration itself that I've connected uh, my application with the GitHub. It is working with a flow and that workflow is having its own um, host name. And after that, there is an API where there will be a message that is having its own uh, function index, there are some settings that I showed there before. So that is how it works on my end uh, that I feel that is, um, that's the way of using the APIs. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, the second one, that is if it's a static web app, then why would there be an API endpoint? Any example, I think that is what I showed in the demonstration as well, that automatically done because you are using Azure functions and there is a workflow going on on the back end automatically. That's why uh, there is a need of API, if I'm right. And for further to add on on this point, I would like Vivek if you can answer it. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, Anil, um, say for example, um, you know, you would have heard about if you have been a React JS developer or Angular JS developer, you would have seen that it provides an API support. Like you want to update something um, in your page and probably get data from the backend and update it here, right? That's a simple example, right? Uh, there is an API which you need to run, and it and if you have a page. Uh, you are running an API, uh, it's getting data and updating that data. Say, for example, we have this reactor survey link and event ID is uh, something, you know, there is 14956, right? Now I want to make sure, I want to run an API to update that event ID to 57. So, or 58 or 59, or probably some number, which I have to get it from the, um, from the database and probably from somewhere else, you know, uh, you might have it in in a storage or a text file anywhere, but you just want to make sure you want to update it. So you run an API and you get those data and update it here, or you want to run a, some kind of backend job on doing some processing, uh, asynchronous 
processing. So that's something which you can do it from there, right? So that's something which you can take. So Mohan has a question. So basically, yes, um, most of them are browser driven, uh, but also you might have you know a couple of APIs to run at the back end. Yes, uh, see, the modern modern applications are being developed in such a way that um, you have, uh, say, for WebAssembly. If you understand about the concept about web assemblies, uh, it's about integrating, uh, having your you know a client being very heavy driven, and that's where the Blazor app and other things comes into picture. So the, yes, uh, browser heavy driven uh, applications for sure. It's a good candidate. Cool, and uh, this is amazing. So I'm adding Rashmita back to the stream. And uh, you there, Rashmita? Okay, perfect. So uh, we have a survey link, by the way, and there is event ID uh, which you can use. Uh, and uh, please provide the survey first. And just key in the event ID and let us know how, how was the session and what did you learn and all the stuff. Um, and uh, scan, you know, you can also uh, scan and scan the QR code and provide us the uh, survey. And by the way, you can also go back and learn all these things via the learn module, which has been shared here. Okay, and thank you for joining in. Uh, this was a short uh, Azure Happy Hour. Uh, you know, Friday you know, Fridays almost of Pongal everywhere. Happy Pongal, everyone! And let's meet back for next Azure Happy Hour show. Um, and tomorrow we also have samosa and chai. Uh, with .NET and Nish and myself will be here chatting about Docker and other things. Do join in. See you. Thank you, Pranika, uh, Thank for this amazing you. session as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.